Lee, we're at MCNC. Now, this is one of your latest investments from DMG Mori, the DMF267 Linear. Now, firstly, you know, what? tell me a little bit about the machine's capabilities. It's an extraordinary machine. The capabilities are a lot more than your average machine. Um, we've got a B axis there, the C axis, as well as your X, Y, and Z. So it is a five axis machine, but it's nearly three machines in one. We've got, at the moment, we're using it in a horizontal configuration with the integral rotary table um, to do large, large blocks for the oil and gas industry. We can also use it as a traditional three axis, massive 2.6 meters in the X, 700 in the, sorry, 2.6 meters in the X, 700 in the Y, 700 in the Z. So you've got lots of capability, and it's also giving you extreme versatility with, with the different configurations in which you can use the machine tool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we can do all sorts of different components there, from large plates to complex five axis parts, I can turn it into a horizontal by putting a cube and multiple fixtures on there, and I, then I have a five-axis horizontal effectively because of the B-axis head. So it's a, it's a great bit of kit. So for a subcontract company like yourselves, isn't this the perfect kind of machine? Shouldn't everyone be buying one like this? I haven't <laughs> seen many of them about, to be honest with you. Well, um, we, we, we chose this to be different. Um, we recognized that in order to progress and grow more. We needed to be a little bit different from other subcontract machine shops out there. And because we are a small company and floor space, like for everybody else, is an issue. And even though this is a large footprint, it is three machines in one. Now, okay, we don't have three spindles running three different jobs at one time, but it gives us amazing capabilities and versatility to almost take on any milling component that fits in with it within the envelope of the machine. And, and when you say any milling component, you, you, you cook quite hard materials here. Can you give me an example of some of the components and the materials that you do machine? And how does it, you know, cope with some of the hard materials that you machine? It copes incredibly well. Um, the HSK face and taper spindle uh, and for the work holding as well. That fits nice and rigid and snug within the spindle. The linear drives, although uh, give it nice, fast, rigid movement action. Um, and as far as material goes, we've cut everything on here from aluminium all the way through to titaniums, past alloys, nitronics, and we've even done quite a bit of ink canal machining on here as well. Now, you've got the wash windows on this, and this is something that you don't usually see, but I suppose with the high pressure coolant and um, it's nice to be able to see what you're machining especially when you're machining some of the very complex components that I can see there behind you. Absolutely from an operator's point of view when you're especially on the first off when you're proving out a program and you're bringing in quite an expensive tool um, we have some very large drills that we put through uh, some of our components and twin boring bars and yeah just to make sure that the axis is going in the direction the operator wants it to go in and when the coolant flies around i think it's a in excess of 70 bar and is coolant everywhere and the operator can see what he's doing um, and that results in us having less collisions shall we say and now with some of the complex components that you're machining you're either machining them in, in a fifth axis orientation in a fourth axis orientation or even maybe a three axis orientation you can even utilize the right hand side of the machine bed to load other components now what, in regard to the tooling, how many tools can you fit on there? And is that a modular system to be able to add more tools if you wish to do so? That's, um, I've got to be honest, Gio, I'm not 100% sure of how many tools are in this particular machine. I think it's circa around 90 tools that we've got in there. Um, I might be wrong. Some of our other machines go up to 120 and some have 60, but I think this one takes six, 90 tools. Now, in regards to the programming now, you know, DMG Mori is a new machine that you've, uh, you've introduced to MCNC to in increase your capabilities and to improve your capabilities. The, the CLOS control is relatively new to you as well. How are you finding that and how have, uh, especially how have your programmers um, found this transition? Relatively easily. Um, 
as in all new control systems, um, it's a question of finding your way around it. But it, it's very conversational, very visual because of the fantastic screen there. Um, really nice large keyboard. The operators really do love it. We had some great training from DMG Murray and their application team came down here and gave us operator training as well and held our hand for the first couple of weeks, um, which was valuable because it enabled us to get up and running a lot quicker than we anticipated. And in regards to, there's a big emphasis on Industry 4 and digitalization and in, in getting the even better efficiency gains um, through Industry 4.0, how are you uh, working in partnership with DMG Mori to achieve this? The control is linked to our internet here, so it is the connectivity of all things. And we, we know, like most others out there, our OEE isn't as great as we would like it to be. So we, we decided one of the main factors, we, could, we can measure it now accurately of what the spindle uptime is and the utilization of, of the control. This is linked directly to our CRM software. Um, so if a customer was to phone up, we can tell them exactly at what stage each component is at or each job is at on whatever machine that we decide to put on via the CRM. So the, the customers have better visibility of our capacity and for, our, for us here at MCNC it enables us to keep an eye on our workflow and our schedule and ultimately to communicate effectively with the customer to whether we're going over the requested lead time, whether we're ahead of the requested lead time and it enables us to manage what kind of work we put on there and it gives us accurate cycle times and operating times. So just to, 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 find, to, to summarise really, Lee, you know, this is a relatively new investment for you. Um, was your choice in this machine the right choice? And is it doing everything that you wanted it to do? In short, yes. Um, without 100%, shadow of a doubt. We, we saw this machine at Emo um, last year. We went to Emo to look at another machine, which was... Uh, we were very interested in from DMG Mori and we were like kids in the sweet shop when we saw this flying around there and again it was the versatility and the capability along with the capacity that made us think outside the box rather than just going for a standard three axis and a five axis machine to increase our capacity we took a significant step in increasing our capabilities to our customers so again, it's three, three machines in one. I've got a vertical, I've got a horizontal, and I've got a five axis. The only thing that I wish I would have done was specified the internal divide. So as you can see, we've got twin doors here. On occasions, it would have been very useful to, whilst one side is machining, to be able to open the other door and load and unload um, because they have a, a partition that is automatic between the left and the right hand side of the machine. So I could have turned it into a twin pallet if I'd have been careful and thought about it a bit more. So there's other options and potentially in the future you can do that. And Lee, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, you're welcome, Gio. It's always a pleasure to see you, my friend.